Hello everyone, my name is Logan Thrasher Collins and I'm going to tell you about some really exciting nanotechnology research from the Dietz Laboratory at the Technical University of Munich. Specifically, we're going to be learning about their Giga Dalton scale DNA origami nanostructures. The research that I'm going to discuss was published in the scientific journal Nature during 2017. Here's the title of the paper for those of you who are interested in looking it up and learning more. So, what is DNA origami and how does it work? DNA origami is a really cool type of nanotechnology in which folded DNA strands are used to programmably form 2D and 3D structures with molecular precision. You start with a long piece of DNA called the scaffold. You next apply many short pieces of DNA called staples, which bind to predetermined sites on the scaffold, as determined by sequence complementarity. This forces the scaffold to fold into a desired shape. DNA origami can be made into 3D structures using a wide variety of different approaches. One common approach is to first make sheets and then fold the sheets over on themselves to create bricks. As mentioned, the staples ensure that everything stays in its correct place. Again, I'd like to emphasize that this is not the only way of making 3D structures with DNA origami, but it is a popular method. <laughs> The 2017 paper on Giga Dalton scale DNA origami made strides in the field by constructing truly massive structures. Of course, these structures are still microscopic, but they are massive in comparison to their building blocks, the DNA molecules. The basic principle is that the authors first made 3D DNA origami bricks, which could stick together in a sequence-based programmable fashion, and then they assembled these bricks into larger structures. Here you can see that the authors started by making these V-shaped bricks consisting of blocks of DNA origami linked by a flexible hinge region. The hinges are made up of staple DNA oligonucleotides, which are single-stranded and therefore quite flexible. The V-bricks also have double-stranded DNA bridges to lock them into a desired opening angle. The length of the bridge determines the opening angle. You can see that this cryo-electron microscopy structure of the V-brick matches the comp computer generated models of what they're expected to look like. The V bricks include some shape complementary regions shown in red and blue on their sides. This allows them to stick together laterally. In this case, it is not the sequence that determines the stickiness, but rather that the shapes match each other in a manner similar to Lego brick knobs and recessions. Using this principle, the V-bricks were assembled into these larger ringed structures. For later, it is important to note that there are additional weaker shape complementary protrusions and recessions on the tops and bottoms of the V-bricks. This is what the disks looked like when the authors imaged them with transmission electron microscopy. Depending on the V-brick variant, the disks can be up to a few hundred nanometers in diameter. Really beautiful stuff here. When the authors increased the ionic strength of the solution, the disks linked together into these huge tubes. Extra ions were needed because the shape complementary protrusions and recessions on the tops and bottoms of the disks were designed to be weaker than the ones on the sides of the V-bricks. DNA is negatively charged due to its phosphate backbone, so adding positively charged ions like magnesium results in stronger interactions between distinct DNA molecules. Remarkably, some of the tubes can approach the size of small bacteria. The authors applied a similar strategy for making giant polyhedral cages of DNA origami. They created shape complementary bricks and mixed them together to induce assembly of the desired structures. The, the V bricks were still used here, but some new bricks were introduced as well. The triangular brick, shown in blue, binds three V bricks. Each connector brick, shown in red, binds to a V-brick partner, as illustrated here. This assembly was collectively dubbed a reactive vertex. By making V-bricks with variable opening angles, the geometry of the reactive vertices was decided. Just like with the tubes, an increase in ionic strength led to assembly of higher order structures. In this case, tetrahedral, hexahedral, and dodecahedral cages were created. Impressively, the dodecahedral cages had radii of about 220 nanometers and weighed about 1.2 gigadaltons. 
This research is just a proof of concept, but it has a lot of exciting implications. The ability to engineer bacteria-sized structures with molecular precision is really profound. Indeed, it may enable the construction of highly complex functional nanomachines. Other types of molecules could be linked to any desired location on these structures. As an example, you could get an oligonucleotide with a sequence that sticks to the desired location on the nanostructure and then link an enzyme to the oligonucleotide. Bam! You can stick your enzyme to a specific location on the DNA origami structure. One especially interesting application of this technology would be to make these DNA origami structures into nanoscale factories that manufacture useful molecules. Multiple different enzymes could be linked along the length of the inside of the tube. This would make a sort of assembly line which would sequentially make alterations to input molecules. But this is just one example. There exists a universe of possibilities for Gigadalton scale DNA origami. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed my discussion of this exciting research.